These are practice exercises from page 140 in the textbook. We're looking at determining the molarity of a solution and also using concentration of a solution to try to figure out the concentration of ions in that solution. So the first thing we need to remember is that the formula for molarity, which is abbreviated as a capital M, is moles over liters. So there are two pieces of information we need to calculate a molarity. We need to know how many moles of a substance we have, and we need to know how many liters that is dissolved in. So in this problem, they're telling us that we're starting with 5 grams of glucose. Well, we're going to need to convert those grams into moles so that we can use that in our molarity calculation. In order to convert grams into moles, we need to know the molecular weight of glucose. So we're going to add together 6 carbons, 12 hydrogens, and 6 oxygens, and we should find out that the molecular weight of glucose is equal to 180 grams per mole. So now we're ready to perform our calculations. We're going to start with our 5.00 grams of glucose. We are going to convert those grams into moles because we know that every mole of glucose weighs 180 grams and that's going to tell us that we have 0 0.0278 moles of glucose. Now in order to calculate the molarity, capital M, we need to take those moles and divide that by the volume. Now notice that it's moles per liter, so we need to convert our 100 milliliters into liters, and we do that by moving the decimal place back three times or dividing by 1,000. So we have 0 0.100 liters. When we do this math, we're going to take our answer to three significant figures, because that's how many we started with in the original problem, three significant figures. So this is going to give us an answer of 0 0.27 molar solution. Okay, for the next one, they want to know what the concentration is of K plus ions, and they're already giving us a concentration. So we're starting with a concentration, molarity is a concentration, and they're asking us for a concentration. So what are we actually doing here? Well, the concentration they give us, the 0 0.015 molar solution, is for potassium carbonate. So if we look at potassium carbonate, we know that potassium is a positive ion and carbonate is a negative ion, that's CO3, 2 minus. So the formula for potassium carbonate is going to be K2CO3. So even though we know that there is a 0 0.015 molar concentration of that whole compound, they're asking us to isolate just the potassium ions. So you can probably do this in your head, but let me show you what it looks like mathematically. If I know that the solution is 0 0.015 moles of K2CO3 per liter, and all I've done there is take that capital M molarity and break it up into its parts. Remember, molarity is moles per liter, so all that is telling me is that I've got 0 0.015 moles of potassium carbonate in every liter. And I know that I don't want to talk about moles of this entire compound anymore. I want to talk about moles of just the potassium ion. And based on the formula, there are two moles of the potassium ion for every one mole of potassium carbonate. So notice that the only units that are going to cancel here are these moles. We are still left in units of moles per liter, so we're still going to end in a molarity, and it's going to be twice the molarity, so 0 0.030 molar K+. Plus. And again, I'm using that capital M because that capital M is a combination of moles over liters. So something you could have done in your head, but noticing that the formula for potassium carbonate has two potassium ions. So whatever the concentration of the solution is, your concentration of potassium ions is actually twice as high. And again, down here is just the calculation for doing it. 
So even though you can do it in your head, when you write these problems, either for your homework or for your test, please make sure you're explaining how you got to your final answer. So how did you know to double the concentration?